Hello, hello. Uh, this is Ben, and I am going to show off once again a, a little progress on my uh, God Mode Dwarf Fortress slash Oregon Trail slash Cypets inspired game, which I have now decided to call a Little Wilderness. Isn't that nice? Um, it was <laughs> a name I was actually thinking about doing for a while, uh, but I I wasn't quite sure if I was going to do it, and I also didn't want domain name to be like bought out from under me uh, and so the reason I'm showing this now is because I do have a domain name I, I bought a little wilderness.com can't talk a little wilderness.com uh, and I have put up a, a blog there where I'll be posting development stuff um, and I'm also going to continue to post of course on the Bay 12 games forums in, in the thread that I started there uh, that, that kind of started all this and in, in, started getting feedback and, and cool ideas. Uh, so anyway, I, like I said, there's a little more progress. Um, this is the title screen, and I wish I could capture the video from the start, but it's kind of difficult. Um, so so this, this little message on the bottom doesn't come up until 10 seconds have passed. I, I figured that if you didn't know what to do for 10 seconds, it should tell you. What's going to happen later on is that your save games will be represented as little villages down in the, in the green area below and you know I'll, I'll make them bigger as your settlement is bigger and one concern I I had you know I, I like this it, it's a cool cute title screen right like I didn't I, I felt like a text title screen wasn't necessary uh, we can have nice graphics uh, but I do worry about running out of space like what if you have more than 10 towns or however many fits but I think we'll just add little arrows you know a left arrow and a right arrow to go through pages of them and you know it can look I mean, that will look kind of awkward to have towns fly across <laughs> the, the the unmoving terrain, but w you know whatever, uh, it's a menu. So uh, let's click on the wagon, start a new game, and this is a work in progress screen. Uh, the the main thing though that that isn't done yet, everything else is, is you can't change these guys' names, uh, but you can change their profession, and the profession you choose at start uh, kind of determines their skills. I didn't want to get as complicated as like point buying the skills. Uh, like, like like there is in Dwarf Fortress, but you do clearly need some control. And, you know, maybe later on for skilled or advanced players who really want to try bizarre setups, I'll add support for that. But certainly for new players, um, and, and for now, this is a pretty good setup. So I'm going to choose a couple farmers, and uh, we want a couple carpenters, and, and maybe a mason. Uh, you can change the colony name not by clicking on it. it. At some point there's going to have to be a, a text field, but I made it so you can click on the title here to get random names. Um, and these names, let me tell you a little about them. So I've got a big list of them here in, in the code, uh, and these are names I found on Wikipedia, you know, just looking at cities in Oregon, and I read through the history and found out, you know, when they were settled and, and uh, any other information, you know, th wh what they were called. Uh, you know, Salem wasn't always called Salem, and Eugene wasn't always called Eugene. I, I didn't even realize, you know, and it, it kind of makes sense in retrospect when you read these things. And it was really interesting to read about, you know, when a city was actually recognized as a city, when it had a post office, you know, all this other stuff. So some of these, there wasn't enough information. I left little notes, and I'll, and I'll look back at these later. Uh, you know, I spent an hour just doing this, so, uh, I, and it's not the most important part of the game. <laughs> so I'll work on it later. A couple names that I don't want you to use uh, because they will be significant in, in kind of the, the game world are Oregon City and the Dallas, and if you've played the original the Oregon Trail games, these may be familiar to you. This is um, the final kind of destination for you in the game, and it, it was the final destination of many colonists at the time, apparently. And the Dallas is a city on a river that you can float down. Uh, I think I noted it somewhere up here. Uh, but people floated down on a raft to Fort Vancouver. So, I don't know, it was really interesting to learn all this kind of history stuff. Um, and, and then there was, you know, unfortunate things, too. So there was apparently a great flood of 1862. Maybe if I would paid attention in high school history or something, I would remember these things. And I knew that um, Native Americans, you know, I mean, <sighs> there was intentional introduction of smallpox and things, which was messed up. Um, but it just kind of swept across the country uh, once it got out, and so I thought this was a really interesting quote from Wikipedia 
there, there was this group of colonists that were like, hey, we're going to be missionaries, and then they got there and were like, oh, the people we'd like to convert have died <laughs> because of this crazy disease. So, bad times, and uh, it, I think it'll be interesting to put this sort of stuff in the game, but, but anyway, let's, let's get back to the game for now. So, let's go ahead and call this Chemeketa, or however you say that, I'm sure I've horribly, horribly butchered it, and again, forgive this <laughs> it, uh, you know, it's a rough draft sort of screen. And then we go into the game, as, as I've demoed before. Um, and we still can't see the skills yet, but what we can do is the explore order works. So I'll go ahead and just, you know, demonstrate. Let's make someone explore. And it places a cute flag, and off someone goes to explore. So, I mean, this is a useful feature. We need to be able to find things in the game, you know, and not rely on the random movement. Um, so this is really good. Uh, I also made it, you, you can't see this, but here you can see the selection changing. When you press numbers on the keyboard, it's kind of a hot, hot key to get to these, uh, to these orders, so that'll be useful for people with a keyboard. Uh, again, I'm trying to keep the game, uh, I really want it to work for touch and keyboard and mouse and maybe even game pads. I'll, I'll have to look at that. I don't know how well uh, supporting a game pad will work on a, on a design like this, uh, but I'd really like to definitely touch and keyboard and mouse. Um, so this is probably a smaller update than before. You know, I demoed the, the build feature before, uh, but yeah, the explore and that main menu and the title and the blog, those are all the new things. So I think I'm done for now, short update, uh, but you know, it's only been a couple days, so I've, I've kind of been working hard at it. Um, oh my god, we can see a fish floating in the earth. Let's make someone collect that fish. It is not rendering water properly. <laughs> Um, oh, I didn't make a hunter. There's no one with fishing skills. So they won't get it. My fault. Anyway, that is it for now. I will hopefully have another update soon. And thank you again for watching.